look welcome to Terry's Tips, guys. Get a notebook, get a pen, and make sure you watch this entire video until the end because today I'm gonna help you delete late payments from your credit report. This is a 2023 update. Now, why? Because lending guidelines have changed, compliance has changed, and because everybody is a credit repair specialist now, they've buckled down on what's acceptable and the process to get things removed, okay, guys? So in this video specifically, I'm gonna go over the impact of late payments on your credit report, how long they can legally be reported, how to delete late payments, the correct process, and I'm even gonna throw in three tips, guys, to help you avoid late payments or if you're in that process right now some things that you can do so that does not impact your credit report I'll do my nugget at the end nugget right here for everybody who is new I used to work for TransUnion I'm one of the only people on any platform that actually worked for a national credit bureau so I've been doing this for over 20 years have helped thousands of people before credit repair was even a thing I am also a board certified credit consultant a certified credit score consultant and a certified trainer which nobody is certified by the National Association to actually train other people I'm telling you that right here because I don't always say the popular thing or the easy thing but I say the right thing if you watch my videos make a list of action items and execute you will have massive results that you've never had before period got it got it good all right so let's jump right in so first guys one late payment the impact of late payments on your credit report one late payment can literally drop your score up to 100 points period it is devastating to your credit report literally it is stopping you from getting real estate financing it is stopping you from getting business credit it is stopping you from getting big money it is even more detrimental guys than like a collection being added or even like a charge-off because for a charge-off account it was delinquent for a certain amount of time and then went to a charge-off status whereas though a current late payment on your current account, that means your open mortgage, your open credit, um, a car note, your open personal loan, your open credit card, your open student loans, one late payment can drop your score up to 100 points. So you want to avoid this at all costs, period, okay? Now, under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, the FCRA, a valid, listen to that word right there, a valid late payment can be reported for seven years. How many, Terry? Seven years, guys. That's why this video is critical to your financial success. So a valid late payment can be reported for seven years. Now, how to get late payments removed? And guys, nugget right here, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, it is easier to get late payments removed from accounts that are closed or a zero balance and closed than it is from your open available accounts. Now, why? The FCRA and the dispute process, guys, is about burden of proof. Write that down. It is a law, the Fair Credit Reporting Act. That means that you are exercising your rights underneath the FCRA, which is the dispute process, to get items removed that you feel are inaccurate, unfair, not valid, outdated. In my videos, I tell you how to exercise your rights under the FCRA the right way without committing fraud and doing things shady and illegal, okay? So it's literally burden of proof. So when you're writing dispute letters and you're disputing items from the credit um, with the credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, just understand that it's about them proving if you were late or not. And the reason why when you have an open account, it's harder to prove that account was late is because if you're disputing something is not yours, which I don't recommend for this, well, they know who you are. If it's your current mortgage, you're still paying them. Your current car note, you're still paying them. Your current credit cards, you're still paying them. So disputing something currently open as not yours is a waste of your time. Boom, I just freed somebody right there, okay? So the dispute process. Number one, you're gonna write a letter to the credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian directly. You're not using a third party. So you're not disputing through Credit Karma. You're not disputing through um, you know, Credit Check Total. You're not disputing through Credit Sesame. You yourself, the consumer, are writing a letter to the credit bureaus directly. You are not, nugget, you're not doing it online. You're not doing it over the phone. You're not doing it via a third party. You're writing a letter. Why? Because the burden of proof is more when you write a letter and you guys don't read that small print. So guys, when you're doing it online or over the phone, you're, you're kind of giving away some of your rights and you're making it easier for them to kind of do a real quick dispute, a blanket dispute. And that's why you guys are disputing things that are still staying on your report. So you're writing a letter. Number two, always include two forms of ID. What, Terry? Two forms of ID to show your current name and your current address. 
I recommend a driver's license with your current name, current address, and a utility bill. If your driver's license has an old address, do not send that because I'm gonna talk about a personal sweep next, okay? So you want the name and address to match on both forms of ID. So if your driver's license does not have your current address, guys, not a big deal. Do two utility bills, do water and cell phone, do cable and electric. Just do two forms of ID that show your name and your current address. Guys, this video, I'm giving away information that people pay tons for, okay? So number three, in the dispute process, you want to do a personal sweep. Write that down. Now, nowhere in this video are you going to hear me talk about data furnishers. It's a waste of time. It's an extra step. It's a bunch of nonsense. Credit repair specialists have you guys hype about, and it's not the most effective way. This is about getting it done the right way so you get results and being effective and efficient. So a personal sweep is a better way to kind of update and clean your credit report for the dispute process. Nugget right here annualcreditreport.com. That is the only website authorized by the Federal Trade Commission to give copies of reports to consumers. It is a free copy. It will not have a score. Guys, go to annualcreditreport.com, download your TransUnion, download your Equifax, download your um, Experian, save it to your desktop, and you're using that as a guide for the dispute process. Why? You need that consumer disclosure copy that is going to be super comprehensive. It's going to have all the information that you need for your personal sweep. More information than any other credit site, period. Somebody say period, period. That's it, okay? So depending on when you're watching this video, guys, I want to go back in the description and also I'll pin the comments. Nugget, always check the description of my videos and the pinned comments for links, for trainings, for our email, how to contact me, any follow-up videos. I always put the information in the description of the video and in the pinned comment. So I'll put the link for annualcreditreport.com. That copy is gonna have all of your names, all of your AKAs, all of your phone numbers, all of your previous addresses, all of your employment information. For a personal sweep, I'm not gonna deep dive in this video. If you need more help, guys, you can invest in my credit score training, I have a training for just in, um, updating your credit report and one that also is a bundle that also does business credit. I will also link a video I recently did on how to increase your personal credit scores, okay? So guys, this personal sweep just means that you want your credit report to have your current name, your current address, your social and your date of birth, which is required, and that's it. No extra information, no previous addresses, no previous employers, not a bunch of phone numbers, not a bunch of names or AKAs or misspellings. Nugget right here. The less information on your credit report, the better. Why? What did I say a little while ago? It's about burden of proof. So the less information on your reports, the less they have to actually verify. I'm telling you what I know. I used to work for a bureau, okay? So that means how do you do that? When you're writing your letter to the credit bureaus, you're going to give them proof of who you are, your current name, your current address, and you're going to tell them what to remove because it's inaccurate or outdated or not yours. Remove this address, remove this address, remove this employer, remove this phone number. You have to tell them specifically. You cannot say, hey, my name is Rebecca Smith and I want you to remove all my previous addresses and all of my employers. No, it's law, it's law, it's law. You must tell the bureaus exactly. Remove this previous address, remove this employer. Here is proof of my current information. This information is inaccurate and outdated. Again, listen to my language, guys. It is your right underneath the Fair Credit Reporting Act to make sure that your credit report has current accurate information. Nowhere did I say claim fault, fraud, nugget. Nowhere did I say claim fraud. You're committing fraud, claiming fraud by listening to these bogus credit repair people. So you're just saying, here's my current information, remove the inaccurate information. That's it, okay? That's a personal sweep. Now you can do this two ways. Depending on your time frame, guys, you can either write the letter for the personal sweep, send that off, wait for it to come back verifying that it, all the information is clean and then do your dispute, or you can, somebody say can, you can do it in the same letter, meaning do the personal sweep information and then also do the dispute information, okay? Now, for the dispute information, whatever account it is, let's say it's Capital One, you're gonna list the company name, Capital One, the company account number, and then what it is you're disputing. It was never late or a payment history is inaccurate. I recommend 
payment history is inaccurate. Why? It makes them verify more than this. This account was never late. If you just say the account was never late, then guess what? All they have to prove is that you were late one time and then boom, the, the dispute is done. You're not disputing it's not yours because if it's an open available account, guys, they can still verify that it's yours. So if it's a closed account, that's something different. And again, this video is about late payments only, okay? Invest in my training, become part of our Patreon. Um, if you want more hands-on, ongoing support with this process that can literally help you get six figures and more. Got it, got it good? So company name, account number, and payment history is inaccurate or never late. Then you are sending it to the credit bureaus, certified. Last step, sending it to the credit bureaus, certified, guys, with your two forms of ID, so a letter, personal sweep and account information. You can do it all on one letter, two forms of ID, sending it certified, guys. They have 30 days by law to verify the information. Now, the very last step, guys, is that wait for the results to come back. Critical. Some of y'all are applying for things you haven't even verified what the results were if your score is going to be updated. So when the results come back, write this down. It's either going to say updated, meaning maybe they removed the late payments. Maybe it was a 90 day late and they made it a 30 day late. Maybe you had five late payments, they updated to three late payments, but it's going to either say updated and then you're going to need to check the account information to see what is the new update or it's going to say deleted. Sometimes in the dispute process, if the company does not respond at all, does not respond at time, or cannot meet the burden of proof, I'm teaching in this video, y'all, then sometimes they'll delete the entire account, which if it's an old account, closed and you know closed zero balance and just had some late payments, it was actually hurting you more than helping you, then that may be actually a good thing. They just delete the whole entire account as opposed to just deleting the late payments, right? So it may say deleted, or it's going to say verified. Guys, verified means that you had a valid late payment and look at me. Some of y'all know y'all had a valid late payment and they verified it was a valid late payment. So in that case, you are going to then look at things like credit builder accounts, you know, hiding utilization, you know, picking the correct lenders. And those are all the videos I have about increasing your scores. And you're going to be looking strategically in other areas to increase your scores because that was a valid late payment. And I don't care if you write 5,000 letters, guys, if it's a valid late payment and they can reprove it, then move on to something else. That's why I want you guys to be literate wealth warriors because there's other ways to raise your score. Come on, somebody, okay? So look for the actual results. Now, three tips for avoiding late payments or not getting them at, at all if you're like in the middle of this process. So number one, guys, put all of your open available accounts on auto pay, at least for the minimum balance. That means all of your credit cards, auto pay. Your mortgage, auto pay. Your student loans, auto pay. Your personal loans, auto pay. Some of y'all have Netflix on auto pay, YouTube Prime on auto pay, your cell phone on auto pay, but those things are, guess what? Not on, not on your credit report. So guys, a lot of times you have your car payment being late, which is going to impact your credit scores, help you, it's going to make you not qualify for real estate financing, it's going to uh, deter you from getting business credit, but then your cell phone is always paid on time, and but you can actually do a payment arrangement with your utilities, your cell phone, your car insurance, I'm not, listen, all I'm saying is be wise about knowing what's on your credit report and having those things on auto pay and things that are not on your credit report. A lot of times if you're falling behind or you're going through financial distress, guys, there's levels to this and I teach high level strategy and I teach leaders how to become multimillionaires, okay, with their personal and business credit. So there's a strategy to this. If you're actually late on something or going through a financial distress, you can put your utilities on a payment arrangement. You can put your cell phone on a payment arrangement. There are certain things that you can do. You can downsize from having cable to having Netflix. And there's other things that you can do other areas that's not on your credit report. So stop having things like Netflix and YouTube and cell phone on auto pay. And then you have your credit cards not on auto pay. Guys, even nugget, if your credit card is a $25 minimum payment and you're late on that, why do you expect a lender to then give you a business credit card that's going to be $100 a month or a mortgage that's going to be $1,000 a month or a brand new car that's going to be $500 a month when you're showing on your credit report that you were late on something that was $25 a month? Come on, somebody. I'm trying to tell I'm trying to free somebody in this video, okay? So number one, putting your bills on auto pay that are on your credit report, at least for the minimum amount. That way you never get a late payment. Number two, remember, they can only legally report you late to the credit bureaus if you are 30 days late. So that means if you're going through a financial hardship and the bill is due on the first of the month, if you can squeeze in one more paycheck and pay it on the 15th, do that. Stop ignoring it. Because if you pay on the 15th, that means maybe you're late in their system. Maybe you get a late fee, but it's not late on 
in your credit report. I don't care if you pay on the 20th day. They can only legally report you late to the credit bureaus if you are 30 days late. So usually within 30 days, you have one or two paychecks. Guys, try to get that minimum payment in before 30 days late. That way it does not hit your credit report. And the third thing, guys, is pick up the phone. I cannot tell you how many times, guys, I have, I'm a single mother of three. I was in foster care. I was a teen mom. So before I was this person, I've been through financial hardship, which is why I teach the way I teach and I pour everything into you guys. That means I know what it feels like to say, hey, I can't pay my car note. Come on, somebody. And what they'll do is a lot of times they'll let you skip on car note through that um, 12 month time frame. Sometimes they'll put it at the end of the month. Sometimes they'll work on a payment arrangement where you can pay half and it won't hit your credit report. So before it goes super delinquent, hey, mortgage company, I'm going through a financial hardship. Can you work with me? Hey, car note people, you know, I'm going through a financial hardship. Can you work with me? Hey, credit cards, I'm going through a financial hardship. Can you work with me? You'll be surprised how many times they'll let you, they'll move a payment, they'll let you skip a payment, they'll let you move a payment date. So work with your creditors because guess what? They have a relationship with you and they want to get their money. Got it, got it, good. So recap, I talked about how, how long it can stay in your report, seven years, the impact up to 100 points and stopping you from getting business credit and real estate financing. I talked about the dispute process, doing a personal sweep, you know, your current, I'm um, adding uh, two forms of ID, doing it certified. I talked about getting the actual results back first so you know what your next steps are. I will link my training and that's my nugget, guys. Get trained, get trained, get trained trained the information you get from learning how to build business credit how to um, build personal credit rebuild personal credit and understanding credit scores is literally worth seven figures and more and i have a bundle i think it's a super low rate that is going to free you stop relying on other people and third parties and being totally confused your life will change you take accountability for your finances for your resources for the information for the direction you want your life to go and if you want to be a multi millionaire, come on wealth warriors, then you're going to have to learn credit, finances, budgeting, utilization, utilization ratios, what the letters are looking for all on your own first before you even hire somebody to actually do it. So my nugget is to go to the description of my video or go to the link. And if you have not already invest in training, go through the training and become a wealth warrior for real, because somebody is depending on your transformation. Buy the house, go to the new neighborhood, start the business, retire your spouse, stop living paycheck to paycheck when there's information out there to free you. Got it, got it good? I hope that was helpful, guys. Have an amazing day.